All right, welcome parents. Uh, I am very excited to meet all of you and to get started. My name is Dr. Robert J. Quinlan. Um, I come from Brooklyn Arts High School for the past 15 years. I was an assistant principal there of both guidance and humanities. I was also a teacher uh, of history, and I'm just so, so pumped to get started at Midwood here. I feel very blessed and humbled to be here. Um, I figured I'd talk just very briefly a little bit about myself so you know who, who exactly is the next principal and a little bit about me. I, I'm really big on developing relationships with teachers, with parents, with students, because I think, you know, it's a school and it's a human organization. I mean, this is students I feel like will remember the person more than the lesson, right? And develop those memories. So I think it's really important for me just to briefly go over. You know, I, I did go to NYU. A lot of students mentioned that NYU is one of their top choices and seniors and some of the juniors talking to them. Um, I also went to Hunter College and Sage College for my doctorate. I think it's important for students in whatever program, whether it's med sci, humanities, or liberal arts and sciences, to strive for the highest degree possible in life after Midwood. So that's just something that I will always be preaching to your students. I like to get to know the students in the hallway. They seem kind of, oh my God, the principal's talking to you. And as the main, the grade, the program, kind of what their aspirations are. And it's a lot of students, but I think it's really important that they see and hear that the school leader cares. And I think it's really important to set that tone. Um, I grew up in a, and went to a high school very similar to Midwood. So I, I, I grew up in West High School and went to a large comprehensive high school where I also played athletics, was in National Honor Society, did DP classes, and did a lot of um, a lot of what your children are doing here at Midwood. Uh, in terms of my pedagogical background, as, like I said, I was uh, AP of Humanities and Guidance. Um, I taught global history. I started the AP program at my previous school. We started with eight kids. I started the very first AP class where they all went in and kicking and screaming. I don't need AP. I don't need AP. And I increased the enrollment by 1,500%. And now we have, at my old school, 14 AP classes. And in talking to students, in talking to parents, I understand that that is something that is of importance to parents in terms of opening the doors to even more uh, AP access in the school here. So that'll be a long-term goal, and it's definitely something that won't happen overnight, but the conversations have already started pertaining to that. I am a, also a father and a husband. Uh, I'm married to a, a nurse who works at NYU Langone. Two small children, so I'm also, you know, a few years away from high school ages, but, you know, obviously I come from a lens of a parent, and I look at every student in Midwood as and giving advice as if they were my own children. So rest assured that I'm, I'm someone who comes from a place of multiple lenses, both educator, leader, father, and husband. Oh, we got the two little dogs here, too. All right, so I, I, I want to just tell you some of my goals that I also talked to the teachers and, and the students about. I did a few town halls with uh, freshmen and seniors, and I want to be consistent in my message. When you walk into Midwood, you see the pillars of honesty, respect, and responsibility. Um, those are pillars I live my life by um, professionally and personally. And I think it's really important that it, it goes both ways, and I always treat both you know, teachers, parents and kids with dignity, respect, honor, and uh, responsibility. I think it's a very important tone for any school building uh, leader to have. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to learn even more about the culture and history of Midland. I mean, this building's been here longer than all of us. It's a very old building, but it has a, a, a large history. And I'm interested in learning more about the traditions that have been here, and also making new traditions and new histories. So I think that's really important. And, and, to have students understand that they how they make their mark on Midwood here in a positive way to set traditions moving forward. And lastly, as I mentioned, also focusing on ensuring that all students are being supported, encouraged, um, by coming with a very positive lens, very upbeat. Uh, I'm always in the hallways and talking to kids in the classrooms. I'll be in even more classrooms as we start to get deeper into the school year. And that's really, you know, where the magic happens in the classroom. So those are some of my basic pillars. This is me with uh, one of the town halls. We had a little freshman year sitting in only. We had the seniors. It was exciting. It was really good and just to get them together and to hear from the principal, hear from our counselors, hear from Coso, Mr. Kalaki, who is 
really doing uh, amazing work. We're getting some great activities in person uh, for this year. As you might know, we have a very uh, active student government who already started planning a lot of great activities. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, we have a freshman uh, election coming up soon. So we have a whole room of freshmen who want to run for a freshman uh, president, vice president. So that's really a really important aspect. And I know for senior parents, junior parents here, I'm telling you something we already know. But it's, it's important to get involved, get involved with athletics, activities, clubs. This is so much to do here, There's so much to do. And really to take advantage of those opportunities. So when I do talk to your student, I'll ask, like, are they in a sport, are they in an activity? It's really important to get involved because high school goes very fast. And I feel like this is the first quote unquote normal year in a long time. And I want to. I want to sustain that momentum, I want to sustain that energy, and I want everyone to be excited to walk in the school building each and every day. I think that's really important. The seniors had a rough go at it, right? They had the almost two and a half years of pandemic being at home. The juniors, the seniors, the sophomores came into it. So it's like hopefully a sense of being back to normal city, and that's really a, an important goal. So obviously, you know, change impacts everyone differently. And as the new principal, I want to ensure a smooth and steady leadership transition. And honestly, I, I can't be more grateful to the staff, the cabinet, the counselors, the kids, teachers, parents I've spoken to, because we're all in this together. And um, I plan on listening, learning, and collaborating, and ensuring a smooth and steady transition. It's very important. And luckily, you know, I do come from a background with a lot of different experiences, both guidance and instructional, where I feel like I'm uh, obviously very equipped for the job here. Um, maintaining the integrity and academic rigor of Midwood. We have uh, Mrs. Katie Simon, who's going to come up in a moment, one of our lovely counselors, who's going to kind of give a, a broad overview of some of the programs at Midwood, um, some of the academic programs. And uh, just so I don't forget to say it, I'm going to stay obviously the whole time, and I'll be here for questions afterwards as well. Um, as I mentioned, building up school spirit, positivity, getting involved. Uh, having, uh, we have a lot of cultural uh, festivals coming up. Obviously, the Hispanic, um, the, uh, Hispanic uh, festival, we have the Kwanzaa festival, sing. Like we have so many great stuff lined up. It's real exciting to be back in the building in person to do that stuff. Uh, partnering with you, and obviously, listening, learning, and getting involved. One of the exciting things that actually happened uh, last week, when when I saw Midwood High School app open college. I just, I don't know, I just didn't see a lot of connections with Brooklyn College. And in talking to the cabinet and in talking with some of the staff, I actually pulled over the Brooklyn College provost that she came uh, to, to Midwood. We had an awesome conversation. The premise was uh, increasing accessibility to the medical professions for students in Central and South Brooklyn. So that was like the starting point of the conversation. But I, of course, had other plans to lay inclusive of standing opportunities for Midwood students at Brooklyn College because it's right here. It's like literally you can throw a rock at it. So she agreed, and I was interested basically in calling it a reboot, a restart, and we are going to sustain those conversations, and it's really exciting. Get our kids on their campus, get them into the science research labs, have the cafeteria, like whatever we can get and want, and I want it for Midwood. You know, if you have any folks or friends that go to Townsend Harris, they go over the Queens College campus and other schools that have relationships with colleges, we need to bring that back. And that's, we're laying the foundation right now for that. So she was very lovely, Ms. Anna Lopez, she came with the College Now uh, liaison, who's also interested in expanding College Now for our students. That's another option aside from AP, where you could do college courses both in, in Midwood and also on college campus. So those are some exciting things coming down the pipe. But at least starting this conversation and getting the ball rolling with that. So this is moving towards my conclusion. I told the students, I told the staff, don't be surprised if you see me in chemistry in the morning and then a physics class and then a history class. I just watched the girls uh Scribble Stuyvesant and girls I like all. They are like really, really good. I could not block one of their, their, their spikes. They're really amazing. I saw one of the soccer games. We have the first football game this weekend over at Madison. So, you know, it's it's just obviously just being involved and getting out there. 
I want to promote the concept also to teachers that they are leaders of their classroom, they are leaders of learning, and having been a classroom teacher myself, I do know that the better the teacher is in the classroom, the better the educational experience for the students in the classroom, and the better the school does. So I'm all about collaboration, sharing best practices, connecting teachers with other teachers, and obviously we have fantastic assistant principals here who have sat in their planning conferences with teachers, and they got really great self planning for the students. And as I said, I'm very honored and humbled to be standing up here. I don't want to draw on and on and on. Um, it is obviously a truly beautiful day to be a Hornet. So once again, thank you so much for hearing my introduction. I'm going to go over just some real basic like items I've heard parents bring up and the teachers bring up that I just want to address head on for you, answer some questions at the end, uh, as I said, I'll make myself available. So first up, the grading system. Okay, I know that's a big, big question. Pupil path, unfortunately, was hacked last year. And that was my old school too. Over 700 high schools used pupil path, integrated it, they depended on it, became the, the main primary communication tool between school, child, and parent. It was really an awesome tool. Um, no one asked to get hacked. But when they got hacked, they didn't disclose exactly how they were handling it. Unfortunately, some stuff got out. So they are no longer there on like persona non grata in the DOE, and that left 700 high schools without a plan leading into the fall. Now, the DOE has started to develop a system called GAM, the Grading Attendance uh, Messaging uh, Application. I've been in the DOE long enough to know that when they roll out something new, it isn't always going to work. It isn't, and it didn't. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying like I told you so, but I couldn't risk opening the school year with a system that would crash, which it did, and a lot of schools jumped full in. They lost attendance, they lost grades, classes aren't appearing. I didn't want to set that tone, so we're gonna walk before we run. So grading for now is gonna be done primarily through Google Classroom. For new parents, the first report card is more or less a glorified progress report. It won't have any numerical grades. It's basically a benchmark indicator of how your child's adapting to high school. Um, and that is going to give us sufficient time to slowly roll out and transition to GAMA, which we're actually going to be talking about this week as a cabinet to share with the parents exactly the timetable of when we're going to roll it out. Tentatively, I'm thinking December 1st, because a lot of the features will be available mid to late November, and I'd rather slowly transition and let people know this is happening and give teachers a chance to adapt their grade books and the kids get used to logging in and parents logging in than to just wholeheartedly jump in and it's not working for everyone. So that's just kind of a, an appetizer of where we're going to be, and I hope that by term two, January, we're going to be fully on gamma and then we'll, we'll never speak of PPF ever again. Um, you know, in, in looking at it, it's actually going to be pretty good. I think it'll be really good, but not everything is up. But I'd rather start it when most stuff is up than nothing is up. So that's my logic there. Okay, so I just want to be fully transparent with the parents and understand that that's why we rolled it out the way they did it. In talking to, I don't, I don't want to mention school names, but large comprehensive high schools, the first couple of days are pretty rough. And especially uh, with your children getting into classes or a wait list or whatever, we need to make sure we equalize, and that's the process of kind of cleaning up the rosters. And if I don't have attendance or accurate attendance, we kind of lose and we're days behind. So I want it to be proven, and I think that's paid off. If you're a ninth grade parent, you've probably heard, unfortunately, the uh, Office of Transportation still has botched up this Metro Park situation. Now, in my old school, this was like a, a lovely a ritual we have with them each year where they short us like 500 Metro cars, or they short us 450. And then like, who do you pick? Like, who gets one and who doesn't get one? So they assured us, because we've been calling supervisors every day, we've been calling the department every day, that these Metro cars will be in the building this week. This week is now. Today's Tuesday. They're not here. Tomorrow's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So technically Friday is still this week, which was next week, last week. So we're gonna wait. Mr. Stack is on it. We're calling, we're raising hell, I assure you, and I'm optimistic, right? I wanna be optimistic. 
that they will be here any day. They've said that they're in the map. So he says, we'll drive over, we'll go to Long Island City, we'll go on wherever we gotta go. We'll go to the Bronx, we'll go to Westchester. They said, bring in the map. So thank you for your patience. We've been writing letters that I signed. They're probably gonna throw me in jail my first month with all the Metro car letters I've signed from MTA. And the kids use that as a pass, right? And that's just the best case scenario for now. Um, so thank you for your patience. It's out of our hands. The Office of Transportation, they're doing, and I'm not making excuses for them, because I'm really good at that. They got the busing for students with IEPs, they have the busing just in general, the Metro cars. So they're swamped, I get it, but we need our car Metro cars. So thank you for your patience. Um, okay, so. Thank you, I'm very excited to be here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it over to the wonderful Ms. Akina Simon, one of our great Midwood counselors. She's gonna go over just you know some of the programs, just not, not like super in depth, but enough for you to get a general overview. As I said, I'm gonna stick around, you can ask questions, if you don't get to me tonight. My email is rquinley at schools. Uh, you can call my office, my extension is 1270. And I'm also thinking about, I don't want to make any false promises, but I do want to entertain the possibility of hybrid um, remote sessions during the day for parents. If they can't make it at night for certain things that might come up, just to increase my accessibility to parents who may not be here. So we have to look out for that, which is kind of formulating how the weeks are planning out so I can make myself available to more parents. Okay, thank you very much for your time and the wonderfulness to be here. Track and the computer science track. 
um, which is really unique to them. So it's a, it's a program where they're able to take intro to Python their sophomore year, and if they like that, they can go deeper into that track and take um, computer science principles, and then hopefully senior year, they take computer science, not A. Um, the third track for the liberal arts is music. They also have the modern science track, which is part of the med side track. They have the option to go into the law track and the media arts track, which is part also of the humanities track. So they do have some individual tracks for themselves. They also are able to go in and out um, of other programs. So we don't really look at students through the lenses of med side humanities or LASI. It's really about your progression as a student. It doesn't matter what program you're in, you can take AP classes, right? You can have a LASI student who is very strong in the science and they can end up taking some AP science classes. So we never limit a student based on what they come into midway. Once you come into midway, you're able to move around your tracks depending on your likes of what you want to do. So that basically happens in your sophomore year where our students, um, at the end of their freshman year, you ask them what tracks they want to go to. So you are able to move. So if you come into liberal arts, you are able to apply to the med side program and then end up taking med side, soft, med side courses um, your sophomore year. All right? um, and also during sophomore year, kids are able to start to apply to AP classes. Primarily, they're going to take like the World History AP or, or Capstone Seminar. Um, if they're advanced enough in sciences, they're able to take some in science APs. But the most part, our sophomores usually take those two APs because they can't take any more because they don't have the requirements. Um, for our junior year, that's when students are able to actually go deeper into their track. So the whole of your sophomore year, you have to stay in your tracks for one year. And when you become a junior, you can choose to go deeper down that track, or you can choose to take other electives that actually interest you, because after you've taken that like high, high college, you just don't want to take that anymore, so you don't force them to do that. But they have the ability to stay in certain tracks, the majority of them for, from sophomore, junior, and senior year, okay? So for junior year, they are able to go on the tracks some more if they choose to. We start to expose them to College Now courses. Um, here at Midland High School, our AP classes are really competitive, and we would love to offer more, but what happens a lot of time, or what happens is that when we have to give the AP exams in May, they have to take it in the building, so we're limited with uh, places to allow, allow kids to take the APs. So a lot of these, and that's one of the reasons why, for the most part, we don't offer more APs is because come May, we don't have the space to actually allow them to sit down and take the AP exams. All right, so if students aren't able to take an AP because it's so competitive here, we have a phenomenal relationship with Kingsborough. We also have College Now courses over Brooklyn College that kids can take as early as their junior year, okay? Um, junior year is also when the college advisors start to go into the classrooms and they start to explain to them the steps that they need to start to get prepared for the college process. All right? And senior year is when the students are the most flexible. So um, the first three years of high school, you have to take uh, seven courses. When you become a senior, we tell you, the state tells us you have to take at least six um, courses, but they don't all have to be necessarily actual classes. So for the most part, the kids at Midwood, because they always usually stay on track, they end up just taking an English class, a history, and a gym. So the other three or four electives are actually up to them, right? Um, so the most thing that I could tell you if you are a freshman parent or even a sophomore parent is just to encourage your children to seek out all the different opportunities we have here at Midwest. Um, it's, we have over 21 APs, I believe. We have something called Capstone Diploma, which um, is a special 
graduation diploma that's given from College Board um, for kids who plan to take a lot of APs, right? There's that diploma, we talk about them as always sophomore year for that. Um, there's also over 23 sport teams. There are close to 45, and we're looking to up that number in reference to clubs. So there's a lot of things that students here at Middle High School get involved with. Um, every single guidance counselor has their own Google Classroom page where we are always post anything that we think will be beneficial for your students like on a daily basis. And also the college advisors have two Google Classroom pages. They have one for juniors and one for seniors that things are getting posted every day. So just encourage your kids or ask them to open up the Google Classroom page and show you that because a lot of the information is actually there. Okay? Um, do you guys have all the questions for later?
plus the overall cumulative GPA. And what happens is, because obviously the students are so excellent here, sometimes it's up in, it's, it's, it's 100 average, 99 average, 99. So it's very competitive. But I will say that, as I mentioned, one of our goals here, one of my goals, is to open access for more doors for more kids to take AP. Now, College Board has started talking about the possibility of doing online AP exams, which obviously might render space not as important, but they're not there just yet. And I don't want to say something that they haven't planned out yet. But we have to explore all options so all kids can get a fair shake out of it. Overall GPA, so how they're doing in English, math, science, history, you know. Overall GPA, which is everything added up together, your academic, plus the subject area GPA for that course they're applying to. And as Ms. Simon said, in February we'll start advertising the courses, like I used to do in my own school, it's based off of student interests, and we try to adapt schedule to what the kids are interested in, okay? Um, I do see one other, did, did you have a question? And I want to make sure we get Ms. Lewis back up here, right? Go ahead. Oh, just it's related, but like the college uh, now program, um, is that something that you So typically the AP classes are going to be on the trans, it's also weighted. But they have to take that AP exam come May. And if they don't score a certain grade on that AP exam, their, their credits aren't necessarily guaranteed when they go to college, right? And when you have the college math courses, we really do try to push the college math courses for our students. Um, when they take the college math courses, no, it doesn't actually show on their transcript, but they are able to put that on their application for college. They'll ask them, have you taken college math courses? And they're actually put that there, they can. Um, if they maintain typically above a B or higher, um, SUNYs and CUNYs will definitely take that credit, right? It could be elective credit, it doesn't fit into their curriculum, whatever they have there. Um, but when they go to college, they actually have to, by like, contact Brooklyn College and get that, that transcript sent over to their, their new college campus. So um, we have kids here that they only want college now courses because they're able to leave here with 16 and 18 and 20 credits because they've taken so many over the years. Um, and then you have the AP option, which is weighted, and they also show rigor. So it depends on where your strong is at. It is additional. It's, 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 well, when they're a senior, we do have two college math courses, and hopefully we're able to increase more, where we have two teachers right now who are teaching a sociology class and a sociology of women class. It usually happens for first grade for our seniors, and that is part of their program. So they are able to do that. For the most part, everything else is done after school hours, a lot of times on the Saturdays. And we always tell them that also looks for them for college. Like, you actually went beyond what you're expected to do to do something extra for yourself. So that actually helps them with applications. And as I said, I'll stick around after if there's other questions that you didn't ask at this time. I just want to honor uh, our PTA president this time and, and have them come up. Uh, my, my final words, I'll say it's very, very important. You get on the NYSCA account if you haven't. Make sure your child is also signed up so that will ensure a smooth transition when we start moving into the GAMMA system. Thank you.